Now to the Flint water crisis and the emails released by the governor. You know, in the nearly 300 pages of documents, there's no smoking gun that points to the governor knowing Flint had a lead crisis. But there are continuing assurances from the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality that all was well. That is until mid October. Let's get to Mara McDonald. She has been pouring through the emails, and so have I, Mara. What's the first thing that you noticed? Well, Carmen, a couple of things. Number one, here is the totality of everything that we have gone through tonight. Number one, it's pretty clear to me that the state had no idea that they had a crisis on its hands at the beginning of last year. They thought this was strictly a Flint problem. That's number one. Number two, we get a really interesting glimpse into how the governor operates. He's not flowery in his responses. They're incredibly terse. And I also think it's very interesting to see who is on this email chain and who is not. What we've got are about a year's worth of emails that show the Snyder administration being told that while there were what was called aesthetic issues with Flint's water, no one, including an outside contractor, brought in to assess the water in March of last year, thought there was a real problem. Quote, a review of water quality records for the time period under our study indicates compliance with state and federal water quality regulations. It then details some suggestions to improve the aesthetics of the water. Meanwhile, the MDEQ is maintaining its protocols for water testing are right on. There is no mention to the governor or staff about an EPA water expert who has raised the alarm with the MDEQ. It's at the end of September of last year when Flint's water really heats up. Snyder's chief of staff, Dennis Muchmore, emailing, quote, the DEQ and DCH feel that some in Flint are taking the very sensitive issue of children's exposure to lead and trying to turn it into a political football. Now the next day, more from Muchmore discussing the congressman from that district Dan Kildee. Quote, Kildee is engaged in his usual press hound routine, which is unfortunate because he's really a smart, talented guy who needs to roll up his sleeves while Ananik is looking for relief but doesn't know where it would come from and, as usual, is a positive force. Ananik is Senate Minority Leader Jim Ananik, who is from Flint. At this point, MDEQ is still maintaining their testing protocol is correct and all is under control. It all changes on October 18th when the then director of the MDEQ admits they've made a mistake and Snyder's communications director fires off an email excoriating the department, which in part reads, quote, it appears DEQ staffers have essentially downplayed or ignored warning signs from EPA's water expert Miguel Del Toro. We have been aware of Mr. Del Toro's unofficial memo that went public in April, but his email dated two months earlier on February 27th to Jennifer Crook and Mike Prisby, he seems to lay out exactly what's come to pass. What is interesting to look at when you look at everything spread in front of you is that you hear a lot out of Dennis Muchmore, but you do not hear anything out of the governor's top aide, who is Rich Baird. Why is there nothing from Baird to the governor about this, expressing anything? You know, outrage, upset, concern. That I find interesting. And I'm sure people want to know, of all the stuff we got here, how much of it was truly redacted completely? Really, Carmen and Devin, only about two to three of the emails in the 274 that we had to go through. Back to you. All right, Myra. Meanwhile, our Governor Snyder not only facing tough questions from the people of Flint and Michigan lawmakers, he was grilled by the national media tonight about not knowing about the current lead levels in Flint's water. I don't understand why you can't give us the latest testing data and what it shows for the water in Flint. What is the number? Um, I don't have the number at the top of my head of the very latest data. And it varies by parts of the city. I would think that the governor of Michigan would have those numbers at the top of his mind right now. Until they're in a range that is considered safe, um, I don't actually want to get into the issue of by zip code or by street what the particular sayings are. When asked what went wrong, the governor says the MDEQ, the Department of Environmental Quality, was too technical and didn't use common sense.